Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. Hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we are not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is. But we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. Folks, there are many, 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 many new subscribers asking me questions about the rapture of the church. Now, on this channel, we believe the rapture of the church is an event that is going to shake this world to its core, and it's an event that will occur suddenly and could occur any day now. But there are many people asking about the rapture. They are being told there is no such thing as the rapture, that the rapture is a man-made doctrine, and that it is not in the Bible. First off, we have to understand that the rapture and the second coming are two separate events that will occur at least seven years apart. At the rapture, Jesus will return for his saints as he calls us, calls us up to meet him in the clouds. So Jesus does not touch down on the Mount of Olives at the rapture. Jesus will return for his saints as he calls us up to meet him in the clouds at the rapture. At the second coming of Jesus Christ, Jesus will return with us as he touches down on the Mount of Olives and establishes his 1,000-year millennial reign. For those of you asking, where is the rapture in the Bible? I hope to show you in this video that you can very clearly see the rapture is in the Bible. You just have to know where to look for it. First, turn with me to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We're going to be reading uh, verse 13 to 18. So the Apostle Paul speaking to the church at Thessalonica. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 to 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. So right there in verse 13, uh, concerning them which are asleep, that's referring to those that have died uh, in Christ. So they, when, uh, when you die, your body goes into the ground, uh, but to be absent from the body is to be present, from, uh, to be present with the Lord. So He's referring to those that have passed on, which are asleep. All right, so let's continue. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So going back uh, to verse 16, for the Lord himself, this is referring to Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. So when the time comes, the appointed time, Jesus Christ is literally going to descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, referring to those that have passed on that are already in the ground. Right? Again, when they die, their body goes into the ground, but if they're saved, their spirit, again, to be absent from the body is to be present with, uh, with the Lord. So when they die, their body goes into the ground, but their spirit um, goes uh, in the presence of the Lord in heaven. Uh, but the dead in Christ are going to rise first. So when the appointed time comes, right, those that are in the ground, in the graves that are saved, right, their uh, bodies are going to rise first. Because right? they have to receive their glorified body. So their spirits are in heaven with the Lord. But when the appointed time for the rapture comes, their spirits in heaven come with Jesus uh, in the clouds. Their bodies rise from the graves. 
to meet uh, their spirits in the air because they have to receive their glorified bodies. So the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then we, those of us that are alive, the generation that will be alive, I believe we are that generation that will be raptured. Those of us that are alive and remain, all right, we're going to be instantly transformed and we're going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Now, where do you find the rapture in this? Well, the Greek word from this term rapture is derived in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. We just read it together. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So uh, the Greek word from this term rapture is derived in 1 Thessalonians 4.17, translated caught up. The Latin translation of this verse used the word rapturo, all right? Uh, that's where we get rapture. The Greek word it translates is harpazo, which means to snatch or to take away. You can see right on the screen here, uh, the Greek slash Hebrew definitions, Strong's 726, harpazo, all right, which literally means to seize, to catch away, to pluck, to pull, to take by force, to seize, to carry off by force, to snatch out or away. Actually, in the New Testament, right, you can find 12 different times where this uh, word harpazo is used. You can pause it on the screen if you need to go through all this, but I'm going to go through it kind of quickly here. Matthew 13, 19, catcheth away. John 6, 15, take him by force. John 10, 12, catcheth them. John 10, 28, pluck them. John 10, 29, pluck them. Acts 8, 39, caught away. Acts 23, 10, take him by force. 2 Corinthians 12, 2, caught up. 2 Corinthians 12, 4, caught up. 1 Thessalonians 4.17, which we just went over, shall be caught up. Jude 1.23, pulling them. Revelation 12.5, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. So harpazo, it's a sudden removal. It's a sudden rescue. It's a sudden, sudden snatching away. So very clearly, the appointed time is coming where the Lord Jesus Christ is going to descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, are going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, to be with him forever. There's a time coming before the tribulation period begins. For those of you that have kids out there, I want you to think of this. If you see your child running and he runs on the train track, before the train hits, you see a full speed train is coming. What are you going to do? You're going to suddenly remove, you're going to suddenly pluck away, you're going to suddenly rescue your child off of that train track before the full speed train hits. Likewise, Jesus Christ is going to rescue us. Those of us that are saved, that have the indwelling Holy Spirit, he's going to rescue us, snatch us away before the full speed train known as the tribulation period hits. Next, I want to go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we're going to read verses, uh, verses 50 to 53. The Apostle Paul records the following. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We cannot enter heaven in these bodies. So at the rapture, right, we have to have new bodies. We have to have um, incorruptible bodies, because right now we are in corrupted bodies. But when the rapture does occur, again, we're going to put off these, this old tabernacle is going to be put off. We're going to be, receive glorified bodies um, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye at the last trump. So when this translation occurs, when the rapture occurs, it's going to happen so suddenly, folks. It's going to be without warning when the rapture occurs. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Because remember, the dead in Christ have to rise first. So yes, those that are asleep, those that have passed on before us that were saved, 
Their bodies went into the ground, but their spirits went up in the presence of the Lord in heaven. To be absent from the body is to be present with the, uh, pre present with the Lord. But when the rapture occurs, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. The dead shall be raised incorruptible, and then we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. There are many more passages in the Old and New Testament that talk about the rapture. I encourage you to do your own research. I just shared with you two of the most popular passages in Scripture on the rapture of the church. And it's my prayer this video has helped some of you out there that have had these questions see that the rapture is in the Bible and that it is an event that will occur suddenly on this world and soon. When I look around this world right now and everything occurring, right, that's how I know the rapture of the church is, a, is approaching like a full speed train because I see the tribulation period casting its shadow on the earth right here and right now. And according to scripture, Jesus Christ will harpazo. He's going to rescue, suddenly remove those that are his, those that are saved, before the full speed train known as the tribulation hits. And if we know that the harpazo, the sudden snatching away, the sudden rapture will occur before the tribulation period begins, how close are we to the rapture? I would say a lot closer than people realize. It's an event that is going to occur suddenly without warning on this Christ rejecting world. And it's my prayer if you're watching this video right now and you do not have Jesus Christ in your life, that you look around this world right now at everything occurring and look at what the Bible says and you will see several things are true. The Bible is real, the Bible is alive, Jesus is real, Jesus is alive, and Jesus is coming back. And he's coming back one day very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now. That lifeboat is Jesus Christ and him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you you can be saved right here, right now as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. So what do you have to do to be saved? Well, the gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Belief. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross at Calvary so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, he was buried, and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin debt that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. It's eternal torment. It's eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven. And he's the only name that can save you. John 14, 6, we read, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Acts 4, 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. In 1 Timothy 2.5, we read, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So the Virgin Mary will not save you. Buddha will not save you. 
Allah will not save you. Muhammad will not save you. Dead saints will not save you. Religion will not save you. Your own works, you trying to earn your way there, that will not save you. There is only one way to the kingdom of heaven and one name that will save you, and that is Jesus Christ and him alone. I am begging you, I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it. As we look around this world right now and everything occurring, we can see very clearly the sudden rapture is approaching like a full speed train. Keep looking up. Keep watching with me. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, he's coming. And he's coming quickly, one day very soon, sooner than most of us even realize at the appointed time. Keep watching with me and God bless you all.